Hello and welcome back to this introduction to designing for the web. In this lesson we're going to be looking at the importance of typography. As somebody new to the design process, it's easy to underestimate the importance of typography. After all, it doesn't have the same impact as colour, imagery or layout. But it is important and it's important to remember the role of design because design exists to help us communicate a message. And when it comes to the web, our primary way of communicating is through text. And that makes typography incredibly important. Get it wrong and your content will become illegible or communicate entirely the wrong type of message to the reader. When you talk about typography, most people's minds instantly go to their choice of font. It's important, however, to stress that typography is not just about which fonts you use. There are many other factors to do with typography, factors that we're going to touch on later in this video. That said, your choice of font is an important decision when it comes to designing for the web and I want to help you with that. First, it's important to explain that in order to use a font on a website, that font needs to be loaded onto the user's device if it's not already available. Unfortunately, due to licensing restrictions, you can't simply use any font that you have installed on your computer. Instead, you need to use a font that is available for use on the web. When starting out, you may well choose to limit yourself a little bit to just the free fonts that are offered by Google. Over time, as you learn more about typography, you may wish to explore paid services that offer a wider range of faces, but I recommend starting with Google Fonts. But a word of warning if loading a font from a service like Google Fonts. You can get very big very quickly. Fonts are pretty large and they don't always load instantly. In fact, in some situations they may not load at all. In that case, you need to have a fallback font you can use instead. Fonts that are already loaded onto people's devices. This means when it comes to fallback fonts, you're working with a relatively small number of default fonts, such as Arial or Georgia. So you end up with what's called a font stack with your preferred font, your web font first, and then a default system font afterwards. That said, most of the time you're not going to have a problem and you so can use whatever font you would like, presuming that it's available for web use. So how do you go about choosing a font? There are many factors to consider when choosing a font, but I just want to focus on two, style and size. Different fonts have different styles. For example, there are serifs that look like this or sans serifs that look like this. There are also script fonts, which are more like handwriting, I guess. Fonts also have a personality, for want of a better word. So selecting the wrong personality can change the whole feel of your website. Take, for example, this car website that I found on Template Monster. It uses a very clean German sans serif font. It's perfect for an automobile website. It's got that kind of engineered feel to it that just feels right, doesn't it? But look what happens when I switch that font for a serif font. It feels all wrong, doesn't it? That font would be better suited to a museum website or a Shakespearean play. Finding a font with the right feel is something that takes real practice. One place to start is to go to a site like Template Monster and look at the whole range of templates that are available and see what font choices other designers are making. What will happen is you'll begin to spot trends, trends amongst the type of website that you're designing, and you can copy those trends in your own font selections. The second aspect of selecting a font is size. Some fonts are designed to work large and others small. Think carefully about what size you're going to be using your font at before you begin making a selection. Always make sure you test your font at that size before buying it. Some fonts become very hard to read at small sizes and others are just downright ugly when they're made too large. 
You may have to use more than one font when working at different sizes, but be very careful. Too many fonts can look terrible. The more fonts you add, the more disjointed your design starts to become. And worse still is the fact that your font starts to become distracting. Users end up focusing more on the fonts you're using than the text itself. For example, let's take that automobile site we looked at earlier and drop in a few extra fonts. It looks pretty messy, doesn't it? You'd be forgiven for thinking that you could use a font to highlight particular elements on the screen. But in truth, the result is often like this, just a big mess. If you want to create a sense of visual hierarchy, if you want to differentiate elements on your page, like we discussed in our last video, then try using different weights and sizes of fonts instead of different faces. If we look at the original version of our car website, we can see how the designer has used bold and light versions of the same font very effectively together to create a visual hierarchy. Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that you should never use one of the, uh, more than one font. I'm suggesting that you just need to show a little bit of restraint, really. If you do want to use more than one font, then finding two fonts that go together can be quite tricky. As with selecting the right font, it comes with practice, really. But fortunately, there are tools to help you in the meantime. For example, fontpair.co helps you pair Google Fonts together. This is a good place to start until you grow in confidence about font selection. Now, so far we've focused on choosing fonts, haven't we? But as I said at the start of this video, that's only a small part of typography. There are many other elements to consider too. But for now, I just want to focus you on three. First, there's line, ha uh, line height. This is the gap between each line of text. The closer the line height, the harder it is to read as the eye can accidentally skip from one line to the next. Unfortunately, the default line height set in most graphics packages and browsers is a bit on the tight side, really. Try to set your line height to at least 1.2 but ideally, try even larger um, line heights. Not only will increasing the line height increase legibility, it will also make your design feel more open and airy. You can see what I mean if we take this lovely typographic design from Template Monster and reduce the line height. Look how cramped everything becomes. You can see why the designer decided to increase the default line height. The next thing to consider is letter spacing. This is the gap between characters. If the gap is too small, then characters can run together. If it's too wide, the words start to break apart. In my experience at smaller sizes, like body copy for example, consider just adding a touch of additional spacing. While at larger sizes, you might actually want to tighten things up a little bit to, to make it feel um, more, more kind of cohesive. Finally, you need to consider line length as well. This is one of the most important elements of typography and can be particularly challenging when you're working on a responsive website. Do you remember a site that adapts to the device it's on? Line length refers to the number of characters on a line. Too many characters and your eyes get tired as they strain to scan the entire length of the line. Too few characters and the eye is forced to continually uh, dot back and forth, increasing the chance of you losing your place on the page. Although there is some disagreement, most people believe a good line length is somewhere between 50 and 70 characters, so you should be aiming for that in your design. This means at smaller screen sizes, you may have to reduce your font size to compensate. To be honest, it's not always easy to stay within that bracket of characters, especially on mobile devices, without making the text unreadably small, so you may have to experiment to get the right balance. So that's about it for this video. Hopefully you can now see the value of typography and that it's about a lot more than selecting the right typeface. I've given you some advice on picking fonts, but don't let that be at the cost of line length, height and spacing. 
Finally, don't forget that you don't need a lot of different fonts. All that's going to do is clutter your design and slow down your website. Instead, rely on different weights and sizes to draw attention. Next time in this introduction to designing for the web, we're going to look at colour because colour is one of the most powerful tools in your design arsenal. But until then, thanks for watching.